to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. The band is back together. It's good to be back. Andy, Mike, and Jason, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, Thursday, January 21st. The year is 2021, and we are back with another Truth episode. This show is being recorded a day early, a very, very big day for our country, because Philip Rivers has retired oh. from football. I really tried to find a gif of some sort of yellow river <laughs> oh, but i could not oh. i could not succeed just to say my man is hydrated jason he's clear yeah. look I, I i you know p river love the man hate the player um <laughs> but that's fair i think re- that's fair yeah yeah that is that is Do fair you, now, now okay jason the, the man is gone you don't have to you don't have to keep the campaign rolling he will be out of football that's right do you hate the player or do you just hate the player from, what was that? Was that 2019 that it happened? Yes, it was, in fact, uh, the previous season that he destroyed all of my uh, fantasy playoff hopes. Um, no, I, I mean, as a player, he's Let me- usually someone I've never enjoyed watching. The way he throws the ball is just, <laughs> it me- just looks so dumb. And uh, but I like the dude. I like the trash talk. He's a good guy. You know, I he, he's taking a head coaching uh, position at a you know a high school. Let me ask uh, you, Jason. Would you send your kids to that high school? That's all I'm gonna I'm gonna put it that way. He's the head coach of a high school football team now. Are you sending your kids there? Pro- you know, probably not. But <laughs> probably not. Prob- probably not. No. What? <laughs> yeah. You don't want your kids to play for Philip Rivers? Oh, he doesn't want any pee stains on him anywhere. All right. I mean, all right. I'm guessing the, the likelihood of finding a lot of images of a yellow river. I don't think that's a common thing. I don't think that's something that's very easy Al to Borland discover. Found one in about oh, three really? seconds, Jason. Wow. Okay, well, that's well. let's stay away. Let, no. This is why we're glad it's a you know <laughs> a podcast. A cartoon. <laughs> it's a cartoon. Yeah. Oh, that's uh, a better one. We do have a great show today. You can find us on Twitter at the FF Ballers, Instagram.com slash fantasy footballers. I want to invite you, if you are listening on Apple Podcasts, to subscribe, click that button, leave us a review if you enjoy the show. We are a year round fantasy football podcast. If you're new to the show, we are here with you. Uh, we don't take any breaks. Uh, we are uh, obsessed with fantasy football and we enjoy. Um, walking you through all of the different ways you can strategize and improve and enjoy your league even more. And so if you enjoy the show, please leave us a review. We are, it really it moves Jason to tears on a regular basis. Well, it depends Most on things do. what the words are, but yeah, that is true. <laughs> Most things do. Uh, but we do have a great truth episode today, getting into some interesting names at the quarterback position. Jason, you weren't on the Tuesday show but I brought up the fact I just happened to notice that the top two finishing quarterbacks in all of fantasy were the two breakout picks from the UDK, and you really? are kind of the king of, of the toot toot mm-hmm. <laughs> in more ways than one. Yes. So, I mean, it was kind of a big deal to bring that to light, that the, we got the ultimate draft kit coming out very soon, the pre-order. Super Bowl Sunday. And uh, here we are delivering the number one and number two quarterbacks for the world. It's nice when the breakouts work, and and obviously, you know, you look at the ADP versus where quarterbacks finished. Seems like the world is getting a little bit smarter with their uh, analysis and their predictive ability to spot the breakouts, which obviously we were uh, uh, a part of that process. But you know, it's it's interesting. I'm also appreciative um, that you guys only got through eight quarterbacks. You left, you know, you wanted to make sure that meat. I got a lot of meat left on that bone. It was very kind. Yeah, we wanted to make sure we saved Philip Rivers for kind of more of the the rest of today's. Episode. Oh, you probably could have gone through a lot more then <laughs> before we ever get to P River. All right, before we jump into uh, the rest of the truth at the quarterback position, let's do some buy sell. Buy or sell, presented by Pristine Auction. 
All right, here's today's buy sell question. We're into the off season uh, questions, which are, are really fun and uh, more speculative, more discussion to be had. DJ Chark, down year for the entirety of this team. DJ Chark, will he hit 1,000 receiving yards in 2021? Mm. Um, he had 1,008 yards in 2019 when we last left him, sort of. And, and last year was, this past year was a struggle. Um, finished 49th at the wide receiver position, missed multiple games due to injury, 700 receiving yards, um, different quarterbacks. Uh, you were Minshew, you were uh, Glennon. So heading into next year, we know that we'll have a new head coach. We'll know we'll have a new quarterback. Trevor Lawrence is likely to be the quarterback there, if not him, Justin Fields. And then uh, what do you guys think? The line is is a, a very apt line because if you look at, you know, he only played 13 games this year. So his 16-game pace was about 870 yards. So he's he's not far off, and he was doing it with uh, injuries and awful quarterback play. So you, you assume that, you know, those two things coming together, an upgrade at quarterback, an upgrade at, you know, the offensive system and health, he could get there. I, I You know, it's obviously very reasonable since he's already been there two years ago, but I'm inclined to sell because I think LaVisca Chenault is going to be more and more involved. I don't know that DJ Chark will be the clear and absolute number one target coming into next year. And even if he is the clear number one, he's go I, I think it will be split more than he saw in 2019. So I'm going to take the under. I still think Chark is going to be a valuable player next year. I still think he's talented, but I don't think he hits. You know, you, you look at it, and it's 25 uh, wide receivers hit this two years ago this past season, about 16. So you say, okay, around 20 guys will hit that. Do I think DJ Chark will wind up in my top 20? Probably not. The bigger question for me is just it, that it's a new quarterback. Uh, I didn't realize I didn't know we were doing you know buy or sell DJ Chark for a thousand yards today, uh, but so I don't have the numbers in front of me. But it's rookie quarterbacks sustaining high level fantasy wide receivers. I know it, we're we're coming off of season where we had Herbert, so it was it was hot in Los Angeles. If Joe Burrow had stayed healthy, it seemed like T Higgins was well on his way to being that as well. But it's 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 still not the common thing for a for a rookie quarterback to come in and have uh, really dominant fantasy wide receiver play. So they, that's that that's why I would sell. Uh, he he can maybe hit the thousand yard mark and the the, the new system now with Urban Meyer. How is how does that translate into the professional realm? We've seen college coaches make the jump, have tremendous success. We've seen them make the jump and be tremendous failures who Chip tuck Kelly. tail who tuck tail and leave like, you know, halfway through the season. I don't know, that's that's happened before. <laughs> uh so I'm not gonna name any names. So th 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 there's just too many questions for me to I'm with Jason that I love DJ Chark, I love the receiver. Wish I could say lock it in a thousand yards, but uh I'm skeptical. It's unanimous. I'll sell it as well. Um, you know, Trevor Lawrence, they're gonna they're gonna build some uh read option stuff into his into that offense. And uh I just don't know if the passing volume will be there. It's not like Chark has been a uh, a, a volume receiver, right? Even in his good season, it was seventy three receptions. Um so I'm with you guys. I think it'll be just under. I think he's a talented player, but too many variables to bank on it. That was by yourself from Pristine Auction, our great friends at pristineauction.com. You can check out Hundreds of daily auctions. Um, Hundreds. I'm, uh, I'm going to be honest with you. I I was browsing uh -oh. a little something strange yesterday on Pristine Auction. Do tell. Uh, well, my son. My son is really into Your the Your son is on Pristine Auction? Uh, no, he's not available. But the Pokemon oh, okay. cards that he's interested in <laughs> oh, what? are on Pristine Auction. So I was browsing some of them, uh, you know, some of them high roller Pokemon cards. Looking Are at they some signed in, like by Pikachu? Uh, no, they weren't able to get him in house, mm -hmm. or at least not an authenticated lightning bolt, Mike. At least but like we, Ryan Reynolds. Then I mean, get, can we get <laughs> that, something that like would that? Be second, oh, spo yeah. Spoiler alert: those aren't worth as much, but that's possible. But no, there's there's tons of pop culture stuff. I checked the. Uh, you can see over my shoulder if you're watching on YouTube the Back to the Future gear on there as well. Lots of uh, signed Christopher Lloyd gear from the from the movies. So uh, you can check Praise them out. PristineAuction.com. Use the code BALLERS. You get a $10 credit. Uh, longtime friends of the show and just a great company. So check them out. 
Let's talk uh, a little bit of news. News and notes from around the league. Uh, we did talk about Philip Rivers already. He is retiring from football after 17 seasons, the end of an era with Rivers and, and Breeze potentially on the way out. A um, well, couple of stalwarts at, at the position. Look, once you win the footy award for the nickname of the year. Yeah, it's not been good. Well, I mean, it makes sense, right? You've peaked. Oh, he's saying Your you just walk away after there. that. Okay. You walk okay. away. You know, what Kristen else is there? Michael, um, you had uh, Mark Waltenberg. You had well, that didn't work out. P. River. I mean, you know, when when you win that prestigious award, right? You're pretty much done as far as football goes. Yeah, so, that's the Elway walk off with the championship, essentially. That's right. Philip Rivers, fifth most passing passing yards ever, fifth most passing touchdowns ever. Where we're not that type of sports show, so we won't get in the, into the debate. But just real quick, Jason, well, I want to. Yeah, Philip Philip Rivers, Hall of Fame, absolutely not. Jay or Andy, yes. Yes, he is. He is an absolutely for me. That fits the gif I tweeted earlier. So and, that that, has, that's <laughs> and I just want that to be said that that has nothing to do with the fantasy letdown and uh, sadness that was entered into my heart for Philip Rivers. I believe longevity numbers aren't enough. You have to be one of the top five guys at some point in your career. I don't think he was like ever. top five all time in passing yards. No, 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 <laughs> no, no, no. I'm talking about th that's longevity. He played 17 seasons. I'm saying at any point in his career, I don't think you would have ever said he's one of the top five best quarterbacks playing football. And if that's true, top five is a stretch, but top 10. Sh sure. There's only 32 teams. So it's like a, the top third is hall of fame. That's kind of my barometer. So no, I, that's, I have a hard it's fair. There, right. there, there are only five quarterbacks in the Super Bowl era that have been enshrined without a title as well. That's Dan Fouts, Jim Kelly, Dan Marino, Warren Moon, and Fran Tarkington. So um, that will be the hurdle for someone like Philip Rivers. Yep. Unfortunately, it will. Uh, no combine this year. No traditional combine. We still don't know how it's going to shake out for these uh, teams and prospects to uh, come together. Uh, there'll be interviews. There'll be workouts. There'll be timed events where, you know, we were talking before the show. Mike Mike was saying, you know, is it hand-timed 40s? Is everybody breaking records this year? TBD, Probably. right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're going to have a ton of combines. Instead of one official, here's where everybody's doing it at the same time, pro days change from something that is also happening to what matters. You know, that's going to be where the, the, the scouting and that information is, is really uh, dug up from. So we'll, we'll guide you through that as they happen through this off season. Are we going to finally get the forties run in pads? Like I've been begging for my entire life. Can we just have the teams put them in pads and okay. then compare them? Yeah, th this isn't a terrible year to do it. If you're having to reset the whole thing, and fix the process, might as well just rip the Band-Aid off. But the answer is no, they're not going to do that. All right, one of my bigger L's from the season, the Ravens waved Mark Ingram uh, right quick. You just see ya, farewell. Best right. shot at finding a new team. Uh, Robert Griffin as well, waved by the Ravens. A.J. Brown ended up with surgery on both of his knees. He came out and he said that the uh, team had told him he was done after two weeks. Ended up playing the full season. You never know how much hyperbole is there for the uh, attention, but this is, I mean, when you have surgery on both your knees, something was wrong. So. Yeah. 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 The nice thing is these were more cleanup procedures. These aren't, you know, reconstructive ACL type of surgery. So there should be no worry about his timeline. And if anything, he should be healthier coming into next season than he was playing the majority of this season. Are these more of those precautionary surgeries we've been hearing about? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm gonna, you know, put an, get an little... extra ACL just in case I tear one. I got three. I'll be good to go. Yeah, yeah. There. Okay. That's my He's... double ACL. That's, that's my dubs. All right. Michael Thomas is uh, likely to undergo surgeries this off season as well. Damage to the ankle. The the news on Michael Thomas, man, it's uh, eye opening. I know this happens every year where we get the news at the end that finally, like, oh yeah, this player was was toughing it out and they were going through like OBJ pain. last year. Right, and so Michael Thomas this year, now they're talking about how he he wouldn't practice, it was just far too painful, and then they would get him out there on game day. If people turn on Michael Thomas come the draft season, which uh, if we know the fantasy football community, we are a fickle and vengeful crowd at times. Michael Thomas, if he drops outside of those, you know, the 
top four at the wide receiver position is going to be a smoke and draft day value. Let me let me just Maybe. let me just bring up. I, see, I believe he will. I was going to pose the question to Jason, AJ Brown, Michael Thomas, right here, right now. Who would you rather have next season? Because that you know, I know right you love here, AJ Brown, but they're right both right they're both now, on the table. Absolutely, but I, I, AJ Brown's cleanups don't scare me as much as you know the the high ankle sprain, ligament damage. But neither one really scare me. I don't think it's about injury. I would take AJ Brown over Michael Thomas because big play opportunity. We we've seen in his two years, he's he's been you know a top guy. And Michael Thomas, well, obviously last the season before last, he was the number one player. That was with Drew Brees, and I assume that he will have a different quarterback. And if it's, you know, if if his quarterback happens to be a tight end, I'm going to go ahead and take A.J. Brown. I will say in that time span <laughs> of him playing with a tight end, while really, really hurt, he had two games over 100 yards. He had a 84-yard game. Like He wasn't scoring touchdowns, but he was putting up some receptions and, and yardage numbers. Yeah, and Mike, Michael Thomas, very good. This is not an anti-Michael Thomas take. It's It's more of a... There's going to be questions with the quarterback, and A.J. Brown is amazing. All right, one more bit of news. Dan's the man. Six-year deal for Dan Campbell as the head coach of the Detroit oh, Lions. Guns Six guns. Six guns, Mahoney. Oh, Six shooter. Oh, oh, not bad. <laughs> not bad. So, Dan Campbell, they're making We're the – We're giving Dan Campbell a six-year deal, Detroit? What are you, you know, doing? Look, I, I love it. I generally speak. Yeah, so does Dan Campbell's bank account. Dan Campbell loves it. I think more teams need to do this in general. Like what you know, Shanahan in, in San Francisco, they made a, a long term commit to him and the GM. Look, you cannot build a program, especially one that's been on the bottom, in a year. And the coach needs to have the ability because here's the problem: you give a coach a short term deal, they're looking for short term results. You give a turn a, a, a coach a long term deal, they build the team the right way. That would be my philosophy where it's like you have to have sure. a foundational time period where like Miami, Miami's a good in, a situation where it was going to take a couple of years. I don't know. I, I just believe in like a four year deal is that a four year deal for a guy to prove himself. I think that's a pretty long term deal for. Yeah, a, but nobody says four gun, right? You know what I mean? You need six. <laughs> that's, that's, that's you need fair. a six, six gun. Be, look, a six shooter. This, this contract is if they need to get rid of Dan Campbell in four years. Dan Campbell's still getting paid for another two years. I think yeah. they were threatened uh, just by his <laughs> physical nature. When they were interviewing, they're like, oh, man, he's Dan, not going to accept four. He needs at We're, we're going to give you two years, and then he's just like, <laughs> just flexes and his shirt rips off. Mm -hmm. that's, Look, right. that's right. How many years? Ooh, yeah. <laughs> the, the interesting thing here is Dan Campbell is one of those rare coaches where he's not necessarily I mean he he was a tight end coach and more offensive um but he appears to me to be slotting in as a CEO type head coach that's going to bring in an offensive coordinator and a defensive coordinator where those coordinators are going to run uh, you know the offenses and defense they're not going to be figureheads for his offense and I think that and can he'll work. just be the strength and conditioning guy. <laughs> That's right. Well, That's he's right. sliding in his nose tackle as well. So yeah, it makes <laughs> it makes sense. All right. Before we get into the truth, part two, we want to thank today's sponsors. And uh this is one I can speak very highly of, and that is Hello Fresh. With Hello Fresh, you get fresh pre measured ingredients, mouth watering seasonal recipes delivered right to your door. Let me highlight a couple things about why I love HelloFresh and why our family keeps going back to HelloFresh. The first thing is, is, a lot of people don't realize it, but it's actually cheaper. You, you think you're kind of sacrificing price to get convenience, and that's not the case with HelloFresh. It's it's 46% cheaper than shopping at your local grocery store for the same items. You get to skip the errands. You get to skip, uh, you, you know, you're in your pajamas. Uh, I, I was talking to my wife. She doesn't like going to movie theaters. She loves that we're now watching in our home and it's nice to have these things show up at your house, fresh ingredients, and what better time of year than right now? You can hit refresh, you know, the beginning of the year. Uh, you can eat better. You could cook more. You can save money. And that is your one box solution with HelloFresh to all those New Year's resolutions. You can go to HelloFresh.com slash 10footballers and use the code 10footballers for 10 free meals. Uh, math checks out. Including free shipping. Let's go to HelloFresh.com slash 10footballers and use the code 10footballers for 10 free meals, including free shipping. 
HelloFresh is America's number one meal kit in our family, uh, all of our families. I know we absolutely love it. And we'd also like to thank Headspace. Ladies and gentlemen, New Year. We, we talk about those resolutions. New Year, new body. But check this out. New Year, new mind. And that's what Headspace is here to do. You got you to work out your brain, not just your physical. You got to take care of the mental. Headspace is your daily dose of mindfulness in the form of guided meditations and an easy-to-use app. Headspace meditations start at just one minute each. They even have a set of walking meditations, so it's easy to fit in. Headspace is proven to help you feel better. Their approach to mindfulness can reduce stress, improve sleep, boost focus, increase your overall sense of well-being. You don't have to be a guru. Headspace is great for levels of meditators of all uh, of all shapes and sizes. Look, we all have counts. Fellas, you got your Headspace accounts. You got all signed up. <laughs> Thanks for oh, the feedback. Oh, guys. that was a question. I was. I thought you. Were, I thought you were kind of like a. Fr- yes, we do. <laughs> yes, we all have our accounts. We've signed up. the uh, the the uh, The website is easy to use, and I'm telling you, meditation is great. It really, really helps you. You deserve to feel happier. Headspace is meditation made simple. Go to headspace.com/footballers. That's headspace.com/footballers for a free one month trial with access to Headspace full library of meditations for every situation. This is the best deal offered right now. Head to headspace.com slash footballers. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers? I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! All right, we're back into it. The truth at the quarterback position for the 2020 season. Always a lot of fun to walk through this. I hope everybody enjoyed the Tuesday episode. We went over the top eight quarterbacks at the position. And a reminder, all of the data we're using, that's four point per passing touchdown data. And we look at consistency at the quarterback position and the reality of what these players did for your fantasy team on a week-to-week basis, not just the end-of-season rankings. Great games. We classify those as uh, more than 26 fantasy points. Good games, more than 20 fantasy points. And bus games, fewer than 15 fantasy points. And we don't hold the missed games against them when we look at it. So, Jason, you were alluding to the fact that the industry is getting a little sharper about identifying breakouts at the quarterback position. Yeah, if you look at ADP over the last several years, I I think this year was more solid as far as people – finishing at or about where they're being drafted. The big outliers this year, Josh Allen, one of our breakouts, finished eight spots above his average draft position. Aaron Rodgers, nine spots above. Um, and Ryan Tannehill, a player that we talk, we actually talked about these guys on last year's uh, Truth About Quarterbacks show too. Uh, these are the type of players, Kyler and Aaron Rodgers and Tannehill, that we're going to be talking about today, the people who – Maybe didn't finish as the top guys, but have a chance to do that next year based on what the real truth about them is. Yes, and so Tuesday's show had Josh Allen, Kyler Murray, Aaron Rodgers, Patrick Mahomes, Deshaun Watson, Russell Wilson, Ryan Tannehill, and Tom Brady. And we'll kick off today's uh, with Justin Herbert. So uh, his consistency rank ended up at uh, six, and his fantasy finish was ninth. And I think Herbert will be somebody in 2021. Uh, he finished the year 4,300 yards, 31 touchdowns, 10 interceptions. Super, oh, super impressive. That's insane. Um, he will be somebody that you're going to have to plant your flag on, though, mm-hmm. um, it, with regards to what you believe about Justin Herbert. 67% of the time, he gave you a good game, busted only 13% of the time, had the big time week winning performances, 33% of the time, great. Um, had number one overall finishes, number two finishes. Yeah, look, week four through 11, it was it was spectacular if you had yes. Justin Herbert and you had the confidence to play him early in that run because it was really, really good. The back half of the year, the you know, not the same numbers, and so you're going to have to plant your flag on what you believe about him in 2021. He's interesting to me because eh, quarterback nine, you know, this sensational rookie breakout, but – he feels like a quarterback that's going to be available near the double digit rounds to me. You you guys might disagree with me, but like, you know, Allen Murray, it, it, we we already went through the, you know these names of 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 guaranteed six or seven guys that will go ahead of Herbert, 
And Jason's right. The you know the the fantasy football community is becoming wiser to the actual value of a single of a quarterback in single quarterback leagues. That's what we're talking about. We're not talking about two quarterback super flex leagues. So I think that Herbert still will will drop in the draft to a spot where the you may have to plant a flag, but the, it might not have to be a, a monolith flag. It might it might just have to be you know just a just a little pop out flag where you're like yeah <laughs> Herbert's my guy. I'll ride with him for a few weeks. Yeah, I, I think you're gonna. I, I lean more on, you know, what towards the side that Andy was alluding to. I, I think, come draft season, there will be someone in every league that you're in who believes Justin Herbert will take a step forward from the best rookie quarterback season we've ever seen, and he will be this next year's breakout, even though he was already so good this season. And and so I I think people will end up taking him early. I'm a little hesitant on. Um, believing that he takes a step forward next year. He's amazing. He he blew everyone's expectations out of the water. Um, I just wish he had more of a rushing baseline because for fantasy, you know, usually when you look at the top quarterbacks, sure. they they rush the ball. And, and you look at, you know, the first half of the season when he was had the consistency rank of quarterback four, he was on pace for almost 400 rushing yards. But as he got... Uh, you know, his his feet under him, a better understanding of the offense, got more comfortable, became the leader of this team. He started throwing more, rushing less. His last eight games, he was on a 16-game pace of 136 rushing yards. And mm. that's – so I think coming to this second season, one, we don't know who his offensive coordinator is going to be yet. It could be the same one. They have not released their existing offensive coordinator, uh, but they are still – doing interviews so they wanted to interview the guy from the rams but that was blocked blocked <laughs> sean mcveigh said to kim matumbo over here you may you may not interview um so yeah i mean i i i don't project i mean he had 4300 yards 31 touchdowns 10 interceptions do you project him to have much more than that just because he's going into year two Ooh, yeah, probably not i will say this you can make the reason i believe what you're saying jason about the case both directions where somebody in your league believes in him some somebody doesn't look one of the arguments for him is he played against the uh the worst offense with the worst offensive line in football according right. to pro football Focus's recent uh end of year offensive line rankings i will say that some of that scrambling he had to do he didn't you know he didn't have uh, a stable running back situation until late in the year as well that was also something that you could kind of craft the narrative both directions with Austin Eckler's acumen in the passing game and that inflating his numbers and moving the offense or the fact that he had to drive the ball down the field as much as he did. He was so impressive. He set the rookie record in passing touchdowns, completion rate. Um, this was a player that you could just see uh, the arm talent on. And unlike a Josh Allen rookie season where the arm talent was 100% on display, but then the completion percentage was basement level. You had a 66% passer this year in Justin Herbert. Um, you know, I think he'll go above players like Brady next year who finished ahead of him but yet are older. But I just don't know how high he can go. Yeah, well, I don't know how high, how high he can go. And my confidence in Justin Herbert is he has a number one wide receiver. That guy's not going anywhere in Keenan Allen. His number one running back is an elite pass catching running back, like Andy said. And what if what if the offensive line gets improved and you look at his his splits, there's there's no artificial pump and dump happening to Herbert's numbers against top sixteen, against bottom sixteen defenses. Twenty five points at home on the road, very, very close. And no no massive home uh home advantage. So uh, those those numbers have me believing in Justin Herbert he he's great he's elite you watch some of the passes that he completes uh, and there's just nothing you could do the defense plays perfect defense they're in his face and they're on the wide receiver and he just lays it right where it needs to be and so going into year two he will step forward I think he'll be a better quarterback next year than he was this year but I think he'll be a worse quarterback for fantasy next year than he will okay. be this year one of the things one of the big storylines early in the season was the decimation of of one of what looked to be one of the best defenses in the league. They just lost all of their stars, and this is a team that had to throw to catch up every single game. They're losing these crazy last-second possession-type games. I don't expect that to happen next year. I think they're going to be able to uh, you know, control the clock a little bit better, not have to be in shootouts and, and high-scoring affairs. 
It's so a good I, point. I probably, if people are high on Justin Herbert next year, I will probably sadly not have him, even though I believe he is phenomenal. Yeah, I think the truth of Justin Herbert is he's a, he's a great quarterback, one of the best rookies we've ever seen, and uh, it'll be interesting to see if he can move upwards in fantasy production. Lamar Jackson comes in at number 10. Saying that out loud, that is a that is kind of like a knife <laughs> in the back of everybody that invested uh, so heavily in drafts. He was the second quarterback off the board, and in 15 games, 2,700 passing yards, teeny pie, 26 passing touchdowns, still over 1,000 rushing yards. That is where Lamar Jackson provides his fantasy consistency, which was at a uh, 20% bust rate, 60% good, 27% great. That last number there is is probably the most disappointing because mm -hmm. you drafted you drafted Lamar Jackson to win you the position over your fantasy opponent, and he didn't finish above four at the position, but one time, and that was in week fourteen. So when the player you drafted to win you the week at the position was consistently losing to your opponent, that hurt through the first eleven weeks. Yeah, I don't know what all the hula blue is. I traded for Lamar Jackson and uh, for that that back half when he turned into the quarterback too. It was great, yes. it was, guys. Well, it was great having Lamar on my team. That yeah, worked out. You know, no problems. Your, your point is apt. That his first half and second half were very, very different. Um, the first half where people drafted him, he he definitely destroyed people's teams because you you gave up the ability to draft a good running back, draft a good wide receiver in the second round. And that's where he was going, and that that you know really hurt you. So the question now is the second half of the year, when uh, he was very very good. You know, from week thirteen on, he was a quarterback one every single week. Um, you know, top six three times. What changed? Why was that the Lamar Jackson that we saw? It is wasn't. That I don't think it was the Lamar Jackson that we saw last year. I don't think that was the reality. I think it was just touchdowns. He just threw more touchdowns in that span. I don't think we right, saw Right, but that that was the Lamar that we saw year like 2 years ago. The difference between Lamar this year and last year really is the the amount of passing touchdowns. He had the lowest fantasy finish for a quarterback with 600 plus rushing yards since Tim Tebow who was the quarterback 19 in 2011. If the pie's that small, you are playing with fire on your touchdown percentage. That's all you're doing. I mean, he can run it in jk dobbins can run it in he can end up with um you know the variability it just came to roost for those first 11 weeks so i i think i guess you know what's the truth what's the truth about lamar jackson uh, i i think one piece of it is very similar to uh herbert that we were talking about if you remember the beginning of the year the defense of the the Baltimore Ravens was as good as absolutely anybody out there, just absolutely dominant, and they were winning these games. Everyone was disappointed with Lamar Jackson, but this team was this team was winning all their games, and then they lost some key pieces on defense, got injured, um, and had to be involved in you know a couple more shootouts. Uh, and and I I expect them to be a very good defense next year. That's my expectation. So I think what we saw. Over the course of the season, you kind of mix it all together with Lamar Jackson and say, "Yeah, he's he's good, not great for fantasy." That's that's my expectation. The question is going to be, how far does he fall? Will people? It won't be that far. I, I agree. I think because he has such a huge name, because he completely by himself won people championships two years ago. There's always going to be the allure, the hope, the promise that you can get back there. You had obviously Hollywood Brown, right? That's the point I wanted to bring up was yeah. over that second half when things turned around, they started using Marquise Brown in different ways. Instead of just sending him on nine routes, they figured out how to get him uh, more involved uh, on the inside of the field. That turned into Hollywood Brown scoring in five of the final six games. And that's the, the that's how Lamar has to get it done. That's how you need that two years ago magic where – Lamar Jackson gets his thousand yard rushing or thousand yard rushing season, and then is still throwing in touchdowns. Just yeah, Andy, I agree. J.K. Dobbins is going to take some rushing touchdowns. Two years ago, Mark Ingram he took a boatload of touchdown opportunity away from Lamar Jackson, and he still was that dominant fantasy guy. So I think 
I think the truth about Lamar Jackson is not two years ago, but it is much closer to uh, much closer to the second half of this year than the first half. Well, I, I, look, let's look at the numbers. We we broke down Aaron Rodgers yesterday at the touchdown percentage. He had nine point one, which is outlandish. He did a nine percent right. like like twelve years ago, and it never came close to that again. Lamar in twenty nineteen was nine percent. This past year he was six point nine percent, which is still a really good number. Yeah, you know, relative drop. to other quarters, big drop. So to me, it means that this year was a little bit more indicative of the prescription for Lamar Jackson, which will be, look, if I get close to what I got this year from Lamar, he's not going to be on any team because there's no way he's going at the QB 10 spot. But there's still the possibility that he ends up like he did for you, which is you acquired him at the right time. He was he was a difference maker for you down the stretch. And uh, that was something we didn't see for the first 11 weeks. So Another player that's going to be really interesting, like Aaron Rodgers or Lamar Jackson next year, it seems Oof. very easy to pick Aaron Rodgers on my side. Man. That's that's tough because it's the rushing the, baseline, uh, you just brought up that that passing uh, touchdown percentage. It's going to come down for Aaron Rodgers just like it did the last time he did it, just like it did every time any quarterback in history right. has done that. And if that comes down, right, here, Lamar's baseline will probably be high enough to where You'd go uh, yeah, that direction. I would. I would lean Lamar. Kirk Cousins came in at number eleven. Hey, Kirk. All right. Uh, did I read the consistency ranking of Lamar? He was actually eight. I. I feel like I skipped that. Uh, okay. Tenth at the position in finish. Eighth in consistency. Speaking to, I guess, amplifying your whole rushing baseline comments there. Lam uh, Kirk Cousins finished at eleven. His consistency rank was fourteen. Um, you know, Kirk is an interesting quarterback. Because you look on paper now, now, now that we know what Justin Jefferson is, right? Look, forty-two hundred passing yards, thirty-five touchdowns, thirteen picks. How that's, impressive is that? That's that's, that's a great, a really season. good season, and it's and, it, it's surprising to me. Like, I, I think because he got off to such a slow start, you know, the 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 first five weeks, he had three games where he wasn't in the top sixteen. He, you just kind of forgot about him, but Kirk was really, really good. He was the, in the second half of the year. He was consistency ranked quarterback four um, as Justin Jefferson came on and they needed to throw the ball more. Now you have Kubiak leaving the run game master is not going to be there, um, but it's still a team that wants to play defense and run the ball, right? Yeah. Mike Zimmer for sure. No doubt. That being said, um, we talked about Tannehill yesterday as I, I count crowned him like the king of the stream. I think Cousins is is right there with him where Cousins took advantage of bottom 16 defenses. He was five points better against them. He was also six points better at home. So yeah. you get him at home against the bottom five defense so, or a bottom those, 16 Those are defense. king of the stream numbers. When you're like, I know when he's going to be good. Is he at home against the bottom defense? Perfect. I'm playing Kirk Cousins. Yeah, I, this is crazy too. Cousins' fantasy finish was the lowest ever for a quarterback with 35 passing touchdowns. So that's just to say that there were – you know, the numbers we brought up yesterday with the rushing quarterback baselines yeah. going up with 20 plus, what was it 20 quarterbacks with three plus rushing touchdowns? Um, it really changed the way you look at this season because in another year, a 4,335 season doesn't finish at 11 at the position. This is a top right. five, six type of year. Yep. Yeah. Unfortunate I, timing for Kirk to put up those numbers. But maybe that makes him a hidden value later in, in drafts with Justin Jefferson's evolution with Thielen still being there. With yeah. the team, you know, winning some ball games. I mean, they won a lot of games down the stretch with with his arm. And and Big Irv is coming yeah. into his own as as a receiving tight end. And then of course, Dalvin Cook is great in the receiving game. So I think it's gonna come down to the schedule, right? When the schedule is made and is out, you're gonna take a look. When you're looking at those late round quarterbacks, because Kirk Cousins could go easily go undrafted in uh, the majority of single quarterback leagues next year. And so it's one of those, like if the first four or five weeks, he's got a lot of, you know, home games against bad uh, projected opponents, then that's someone I'm going in on. If he is, uh, starts his year with a difficult schedule, I think he's going to be a schedule based draft decision for me next season. It's nice that they found, you know, coming into the year, so much doubt with Diggs leaving. It's nice to know that you have, you know, the ascendant talent of Jefferson. Number 12 at the position with a 22. Uh, that's where Matt Ryan ranked in consistency. 12th oh. in total points. Mm. 22nd in consistency. Ew. 
He yeah. busted that's, 44% of his games. Busted. Oof. Is that the – is Matt Ryan – let's let's figure this out. Does that make Matt Ryan, on the Truth episode, the worst fantasy football quarterback that's possible? Yeah. Because he's yeah. the he, – he finished yes. – you start 12, he finished at 12, so you're the worst of the starters. And then you were so inconsistent that you could deliver – I'm looking at his consistency chart. It's shocking to have six games – Outside the top twenty-five on the week, yeah, and he would start. A, he wouldn't just be bad all the time, though. He would start the run of those <laughs> games after he finally convinced you that you should be starting Matt Ryan, opening up with a QB finish of seven and six, then went on a run three straight outside of the top twenty-four. Then you're oh, then he's back. Okay, okay, Matt Ryan, we're going into the bye week. I trust you, my man. Take me there. Another run all outside of the top 15. Like, this was infuriating. Matt Ryan is a, is a better quarterback than this, in, in my opinion. You had the Julio Jones problem. They totally botched his situation with his hamstring, which is the the interesting thing about the, the hamstring story. I don't know if you guys remember. Devontae Adams had a hamstring problem at the exact same time as Julio Jones, and the Green Bay Packers sat mm -hmm. Devontae down and said, we want you to heal up, and Julio Jones, I don't know, forced his way on the field. The trainers told him he was good to go, and you see the, the tale of those two seasons could not be more opposite. One of the coaches was secure in his job, and one of them was playing I, for, to, to have you might uh, another, right. another year, and so you get Julio on the field. Obviously, that's uh, a huge question. Uh, we presume Julio will be here and be the starter. Yeah. I think by the time next year comes, you could have another quarterback on this roster. And Matt Ryan is an untouchable draft pick, other than you know, and if the first couple games of the season uh, I, start well, does he get the deed to P River at this point? Is that handed off to Look, Matt Ryan? I mean, yellow I was, ice. I was immediately Ooh, yellow ice. Oh, oh, Matty yellow <laughs> ice. Oh goodness, I think. Oh. Oh. What's funny is in my it's head. Good to, good to know we went about half a show without a urine related ref. Reference. Jason, you know, uh, we we've talked. I guess it was a couple shows ago uh, about at the the city of Atlanta. It seems like the local press is tr like we need to move on from Matt Ryan. Is it time to move on from Matt Ryan? You're telling me if if uh, I, I, aside from family life and all that, I'm just saying you know the 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 professional situation. Hey, Matt Ryan, you could go be the quarterback for the Colts next year. Or would you rather be the quarterback for this team? Like, Matt Ryan, the player, I'd be very happy to go play for the Colts and replace the P River. Yeah, well, they, yes. they had a lot of close games this year. They had a lot of opportunities to win games, and that was with a missing Julio. So I don't know if they think it's as bad as, as maybe the fantasy community feels like it is. Look, the only quarterback out there that can uh, rival Matt Ryan in, in consistency awfulness uh, was Matthew Stafford, but he was because of injury. It wasn't his f fault. He had games where he'd start for you know a, a drive or two, and then went out with injury. That's Matt they Ryan feel, did this all on his own. This was they, yellow ice. They they do <laughs> this is yellow ice. They do feel similar though because the fan bases with the kind of mediocrity of the teams have a a weird fatigue that the rest of the outside world doesn't have for those players. There are Detroit fans who want to move on from Matthew Stafford. There are there are Falcons fans that want to move on from uh, Matt Ryan. Um, by the way, here's one area where he was consistent. In 2019 and 2020, he couldn't put up numbers against top 16 defenses. So when you're looking at that streaming equation, um, look, nine points worse against top 16 defenses last year, nine points cool. worse essentially this year. I think you're looking at this all wrong, Andy. Nine points better. Against bottom sixteen. Oh, okay. Ten he really points better. I guess it's a matter of perspective there. Um, so we can move on though. Let's let's uh, touch on a, a number of these uh, later quarterbacks. Uh, we can be brief and bring up guys that you guys really want to talk about as well. But Derek Carr finished thirteenth at the position, sixteenth in consistency. Um, you know, this was a play pretty consistent against top and bottom defenses, home and away. But just right there in that Derek Carr zone, which is not really a fantasy beep, beep. place to be. Nope. Six no, percent great games would be something to highlight there, um, and we'll we'll share some of these truth uh, charts 
with you guys on Twitter so that you can see some of the breakdown. But busted 38% of the time, yeah, okay. And you couldn't you couldn't really get a handle on which games it was coming. Sometimes it would be a bad matchup. He has a good game, a great matchup. He has a bad game. At the end of the year, his splits were about the same. So he wasn't really a great streaming candidate. I don't think he's got the weapons to get me excited. He's got the walrus, and that's it. I think they whiffed on their draft picks. Um, I banned him. Didn't I ban him? I yeah, haven't, sent, I haven't sent in the car since then, nor will I. So, Well, um, he sent it in because he was – I think he was the number one quarterback on the week <laughs> after you banished him. Yeah. Well, that's now, how are we works. talking guys at random or are we going just down well, let, the list Let me here. walk through just a few more real quick. And if you guys have comments on them, um, you can share them and then, then you can bring up some names if I, if I miss them. Uh, Big Ben at 14, consistency of 19, says he mm -hmm. wants to come back and play again. He is a as close to a hands-off fantasy quarterback as you can get. I mean – 7% great games, 33% good. Those numbers stink. Busted a third of the time. Um, I mean, this was this was not a good year for Big Ben. You look at the consistency chart and, you know. No, it's crazy. crazy. Gross. You in. He's done. Ooh. I mean, it's just, it's oh, over. You, it's he should over. probably go the way of Breeze and Rivers. Yeah, I think it's over for Big Ben. It was wild that that with a season of 3,800 yards and 33 touchdowns, you know, that's that's fine but he still managed to sustain several fantasy relevant pass catching weapons you know from claypool to deontay johnson uh, it was just wild that the quarterback didn't come through well it's he a 16 game pace of 648 passing attempts that is that he's throwing the ball a lot. At, they didn't run they all couldn't times run. of every game and he you know he got 3800 passing yards he's washed honestly it reminds me of what happened to breeze there was you know he did take downfield shots but the way the offense moved was dinks and dunks and juju was a possession guy a few yards from the line of scrimmage and he threw screens to Deontay, and and you're gonna lose juju this offseason so oh yeah it's, it's not getting better i don't think for for big ben stafford uh finished at 15th Consistency rank of 21st. Honestly, Stafford was probably my biggest disappointment at the quarterback position for the whole year based on how we finished last year. Some of that's not his fault. Kenny Galladay was essentially gone for the entirety of the year. But you didn't see... Might be see, gone next year. He absolutely And then he could. had his injuries. He had injuries. Marvin Jones could be gone too. So this whole off-passing offense, Matthew Stafford could be gone. I mean, that's not a 0% in the offseason for this team. Sure. Um, if you're building with a six-year contract with Dan Campbell, mm. a decision is going to have to be made on whether Stafford's your future. I I think you'd be an idiot not to keep him there. Um, but 4,000 yards, 26 passing touchdowns, injured frequently, only a handful of games in the top 10. And, if I'm uh, the Colts and I get to decide between Stafford and Matt Ryan, give me Stafford all day. I agree. I agree. There, there's got to be a decent age gap between them, right? I think Stafford's yes. only 33. What? No way. Is that true? 33 he's years old. Around, that is correct. He's been around forever. So Stafford has a... I think that's why I would two, keep him two, if I was Dan yeah. Campbell. Two-year age gap. Matt Ryan's 35 right now. Yeah. Okay. Um, Cam Newton. All right. D-U-N? Cam Newton? Yeah. yeah I don't think he starts another game outside of an injury. Baker Mayfield. Here's a That's player that, the one I want to talk about. Sure. Yeah. Why don't you uh, talk about Baker? Because he was the 17th ranked fantasy quarterback, 28th in consistency. That is not good. That's awful. Um, but his second half of the year, he was quarterback 15 in consistency. We talked about this a lot through the season. He had a ton of weathery, awful, impossible to have good fantasy success games in the middle of the season where he had his worst stretch. At the beginning of the season, when there wasn't the weather problems and you had Odell Beckham, he was meh at best. But as the season went on, when they got after the weather and Odell Beckham was not part of this team and you just let Baker run the offense, he was good. He played well. He looked good. He looked good in the playoffs to me. Um, I, I think he is going to be someone I'm interested in next year. And I'm really curious what this team is going to do with Odell Beckham. Can they look and say our offense is better without Beckham? Can we move on from him? Or is it just going to be Beckham added back in? And if so, is that worse for Baker? Well, 
I don't think Baker, you know, we're, we're going to have a differing opinion here. No, I, I gave Baker credit in the playoffs. I think Baker executed the quarterback position extremely well down the stretch for the team. I agree with every sentiment you have. However, this is like giving me a less athletic, lower floor Russell Wilson type of solution for my fantasy team. The identity of Kevin Stefanski has always been to run the football. They have two elite running backs. They have a good defense. I do not think I'm going to be able to ever count on Baker in the current environment um, outside of uh, a streaming potential. Mike, where do you see Baker's future? Because this, in totality, was not a good year for Baker. Yeah, I would say it's an okay year for and the Baker. weather in cleveland plans to be about the same year to year <laughs> that's fair that is a, i mean it's not good they're not changing it <laughs> absolutely um yeah i i lean more on the side uh with you andy that i like baker mayfield i think that baker is a good quarterback who can execute but with his situation and those around him i don't think that he can make that jump to being a top tier Wide receiver. The the question of what about a quarterback though? Uh, sorry, a quarterback. <laughs> the I started thinking wide receiver because it's it's an absurd question. It is an absolutely absurd question mm -hmm. to say is a quarterback better if you remove an elite wide receiver who in the first couple years of that wide receiver's career he did things that we've never seen in, in the history of the NFL. Could that quarterback be better if he's not on the team? It's an absurd question, and yet it is a very fair question because we have seen. Uh, you know, about uh, uh, we've seen enough games with Baker and Odell Beckham together to say that it's it doesn't work. Could it be fixed? Sure, but at this point, it just it whatever the connection is between those two guys, it just doesn't work. I've thought a lot about that whole situation because Kevin Stefanski came out and said how you know how committed to the team Odell Beckham is, how excited he is to have him back next year. The contract is not conducive for Beckham leaving. You know, Landry's a best friend. Like, I think Beckham's back in full next year. And I wonder sure. if, I wonder if it, you know, this team found itself with a brand new head coach halfway through the year. I wonder if it was less Beckham than we think. Played Baltimore, Could Washington, be. Indianapolis, Pittsburgh in that beginning part of the year. Those are four extremely good defenses during those Beckham year, days. So, you know, I, I saw enough Higgins and Hodge in, in the last mm -hmm. part of the season. And to Baker think. just learning an offense at that beginning point. Too. Yeah, it's, exactly. It, it's That's what I'm saying. It's it's absurd that this is even a, a an okay discussion to have. Right, right? right. It's, it's not hot takey. It sounds like a stupid hot take. Is, yeah. is Kirk Cousins better without Justin Jefferson? Like, <laughs> right. what? What are yeah, you talking that's, about? That's a, and, that's a stupid and, question. I'm glad you brought up the opponents, Andy, because hopefully Odell Beckham – was not the issue, but I, I am currently inclined to just believe that narrative that, sure. that he hurts Baker's ability to spread the ball around the way that it's best for the offense. We've seen nine games without him, 23 with those two on the field together. He's three points better without Beckham. Yeah. That's I mean, absurd. you can't, I, it was part of that rookie year too, where you didn't have him there and he, he went and showed you, uh, you know, red zone efficiency. You weren't forcing the football in. Uh, it's, it's a worthwhile discussion no question and and what Beckham has coming back from an ACL after declining seasons as well will be interesting they did have the number one offensive line in all of football the offseason moves that were hyped and talked about on the show uh they came to fruition in in building this team into a playoff uh contender so uh give me another name that you guys want to discuss here Goff was 18th with 26th ranked consistency. Bridgewater was 19th with 27th consistency. The retiring Rivers, 20th at the position. But um, there are names such as Carson Wentz, Joe Burrow, Dak Prescott that could be interesting to talk about. Yeah, Dak, Dak Prescott's someone we cannot forget about. We, you know, at the end of the year, he's far down the rankings. When you project out next year, you're going to have a hard time putting him like top three because right. we saw these guys. We saw Kyler and we saw Josh Allen and we saw, obviously you got Mahomes and Lamar was great the second half, but Dak was fantastic. He was consistency ranked quarterback seven above most of these guys we've been talking about. He was, you know, in weeks two, three, and four, uh, he was the quarterback one, four, and one. And then he got injured in week five. Um, so it's, 
I, you I think, think he's going to be able to do it in New York with the Jets? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I believe Dak will be back with the Cowboys, and he should be an absolute lock for a top five quarterback. I think the defense is going to stink. His weapons are great. CeeDee Lamb's got another year uh, under his belt in this offense. And, you know, assuming that he's healthy, which, you know, the money on the contract will probably tell us loud and clear. Um, I think Dak is someone we you just can't forget about. And he will almost assuredly be a good value next year because of the injury this year. I was going to ask you, do you think he goes uh, past, you know, sixth, seventh round, eighth round? I think that Dak is primed to to be drafted right in that Josh Allen spot of last year. Yeah, like, uh, I mean, we're still really a long ways away, but I get the feeling that Dak Prescott is going to be a, a fantasy footballer darling come the draft season. Yeah, and and it's hard to talk about. I, Joe. I will be all if he's back in Dallas, I will be all in on him. I'm with Jason that he's he has top five potential. We've we've never seen him be bad for fantasy football. Well, and you've got to be excited about Blake Jarwin's you know triumphant return. Yeah, I mean, who, cares, imagine, who cares about CD Lamb? Imagine week two and four when when Dak Prescott was the number one overall quarterback and he didn't have his best weapon. <laughs> uh, Joe Burrow, just quick passing thoughts on him. I mean. It was, we didn't get to see very much, um, but I think we were all impressed with the way he competed on a regular basis in a tough division. Uh, T. Higgins line. looks like he has a bright future. Yeah, I think 30th ranked offensive line. But the story of Joe Burrow is really going to be the multi year recovery situation yeah. for the torn ACL, MCL, PCL. Yeah, the, the uh, medical. All the term L's are down, man. The medical term for what happened is shredded knee. Right, and it sucks, and uh, it, it might be a while till we see. It may make it hard to project some of their, their passing uh, weapons next year, but a uh, bright future for T. Higgins. I think a bright future for Joe Burrow, but a tougher place too. to get it done. You know what I mean? It, it's almost the – Sure. It's like Stafford, right, in Detroit, and you're like, well, you know, maybe you could have been luckier to be drafted to a, fr a different franchise <laughs> or a different opportunity, but I think we all like Burrow um, – Talent wise and, and talent wise, but but with the recovery of the knee, I think he can come back from it. But he won't be on he won't be on my draft board. I can't imagine that Burrow, especially the first half of next year, is close to the player that he yeah. will be. Like he won't be hundred percent halfway through next year. I will not take him off my board. He's great, but he'll he be low on great. it. He'll be low on it. Okay. <laughs> that's a big that's a big board. That's a yeah. big board. Um <laughs> All right. Is this, well, is this a three quarterback league? Great, <laughs> Joe Burrow. Uh, it, I believe Jason already has him on his dynasty team, right? He's just tucked yes, away in the does. recovery room part of your team. <laughs> yes, exactly. The IR. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, uh, that'll do it for today's episode of the podcast. More truth episodes uh, across a number of uh, positions. What's our net, Brooks? What's our next position that we're going to break down? Getting into the running backs. Oh okay. yeah. Okay. So that'll be fun. Uh, anything else that we need to cover today? You guys got anything on your mind? Jason, how you doing? What, what shirt are you wearing today? I know it's, it's YouTube, but uh, oh, it's, it's, a, a, it's, it's a bright a shirt. Okay. A bright Nike shirt. My man. Mm -hmm. All right. That's yeah. pretty nice. That's pretty nice. All right. That'll do it for today's episode. Thank you for tuning in, supporting the podcast. You can find us YouTube.com slash the fantasy footballers. Subscribe. Click the bell. We'll be here all off season. Looking forward to it. Take care, everybody. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.